We're going to begin by saying what B tree indexes can't do. Now, these are very bold statements I'm giving you. Say so they can't do things, they can't do all these things. They often work around sort of mean they can. But in principle, there are certain issue situations where B tree indexes really aren't any help at all. First, consider the case of multiple indexes on one table. Now, what I'm doing here, by the way, is I'm working in one of the demonstration schemas. Uh, we're going to be doing all our demonstrations. I always do do all my demonstrations in the standard demonstration schemas provided by Oracle. And for the moment, I'm just in the very simple Scott schema. Scott has four tables in total, four tables, the EMP table, the depth table, uh, the bonus table and the sal grade table. Very simple schema indeed, but it'll do for this. Later on, I'll be using the more, some of the more complex demonstration schemas, which I know some people are not as familiar with as I am, so we will describe them. Specifically, the HR schema, HR Human Resources, and that's the transaction processing schema, fully normalized, very simple. And then we'll also be using the SH schema, the sales history schema, and that's a denormalized data warehouse demonstration environment. So just as I mentioned, I'm working in the standard demonstration schemas, which I'll describe as necessary in case anyone isn't familiar with their structures. Now, multiple indexes on one table. If we look at the standard Scott schema, we've got a table EMP. EMP has a primary key index on the EMP no column, and that's it. It's a simple table, one index. If we look at the contents of that table, select star from EMP, 14 rows. Every employee has a number, a name, a job, a manager, except for Mr. King, who is the president, a hire date, salary. Some of them have commission. They all have a department number. There is a foreign key relationship on DEPT's now going to the other table in the schema, which is DEPT. And DEPT, three columns, select star from DEPT, four rows. And there's the primary key of DEPT, which is the join column back to EMP. So I'm going to index a couple of columns to help with a particular query, perhaps. Let's say my query is this. I'm going to enable the auto trace facility, by the way, just so we can see execution plans for the queries I'm running. Now, the query I'm going to try to tune here is select count star from AMP, where job equals Clark and depth now equals 30. So a predicate across two columns connected with an AND, simple Boolean algebra. And there's only one person who fits those criteria, full table scan. Let's say I try to tune it. Well, obvious choice for tuning, create an index on the column in the predicate. Well, job equals Clark. Let's not drop the index and to create the index first. I create the index job I on amp job. That'll be a standard B tree index. Then create another index, depth I on depth no. So indexes on those two columns. What now happens when I run the query? It's used the job I index, expecting to get four rows back. It's then using those four keys to get the rows from the table. And at that point, it's applying the second filter, depth now equals 30. So we're retrieving rows, discarding the ones we don't want. Right. And ending up basically with just one employee. It's only using one of the indexes. Well, I could force it to use the other index with a hint. So let's use the index on EMP and maybe have it use the depth I index instead. Now it's using depth I instead of job I, retrieving six rows, throwing away the ones that don't conform, leaving us with just the one. So we can't on the face of it use two indexes. Right, let's try then with bitmap. I'll drop my two indexes, drop job I, drop depth I, and then create the bitmap indexes. This is just to get used to the syntax at this point. All we do is have the keyword bitmap. 
and that will have created a bitmap index. Now, what happens now when I run my query? Okay, same query, and now we're using both indexes. And that's the most basic use of bitmap indexes. You can use multiple indexes on one table for one query. At this point, please don't ask us yet what a bitmap index actually is or what that bitmap and operation is. We'll be covering that shortly. For now, just hang on to the fact that the B tree index could not use the B tree index structure. The optimizer couldn't use both indexes for the one query. It has to choose one, hit the table, and then throw away the extras. Right. There are a couple of workarounds for that, by the way. I'll be interested to know if any of you can pick up on them. Another problem that beach tree indexes have is nullable columns. You don't have nulls in a B tree index. So again, look at the emp table, see what we've got there. That column com commission, lots of people have nulls in there. So what if I index that one with a B tree index? Index it and then run a query that will attempt maybe to use the index. Select count star from amp where com is null. So there's an index on that column. Can I use it? No way, full table scan. So I hope you can begin to see what we're getting here. We've now got two cases that will occur all the time in standard applications where the B tree index simply isn't helping. No, a product is across two columns. B trees, use one or the other, not both. An is null predicate, can't use the index at all. By contrast, do it as a bitmap, drop the index, recreate it as a bitmap index on the same column, now run exactly the same query. There we are, bitmap index fast full scan. We can use the index. And note the cost has come down significantly. That's costed at one, whereas previously with the full scan costed at three. So it's simple examples of how bitmap indexes make access paths available that were not available previously. There's also an issue of columns with few distinct values. The B tree structure is pretty bad if it's a column where the values are really grouped together. Now, for a primary key column, a unique column, B tree is wonderfully efficient, provided you're using equality predicates on that column. But where you have only a few distinct values in a column, and it's a large table, you can be in trouble with B tree indexes, and Oracle will quite frequently ignore them completely. For example, take a look at one of the other demonstration schemas. There's a table sh.customers. sh.customers, every customer has an ID. He has a name, address details and all that. He also lives in a particular country. Now, I'm going to index that country ID column. Now, create index CI on sh customers country ID. Why would I do that? Because I want to know what country people are in. Well, Take perhaps a look at how many people are in each country. Well, a simple query here, select country ID, count staff, message customers, group by country ID. Right. It's used the index for that. And that is telling me that in fact, there are only 19 distinct values. There are in the whole table, 55,000 rows, but only 19 distinct values for country ID. And look, of those 55,000 people, 18,000 of them are in country 52790. That, by the way, is America. So we're assuming then that the vast majority, between a third and a quarter of our customers are in one country. Is Oracle going to use that index when I run a query like this? Select count star from SH customers where country ID equals that. And that is the country 
where most of my customers are. It's still a fast full scan. So it has managed to use the index, but that's a pretty inefficient way of using it. A fast full scan reads every block of the index, typically direct path read from disk to PGA. It's not the single block IO you would want to get for navigating a B tree index. Try a different approach. Any questions on direct path read? Please let us know. Thanks, John. It's an important point, and you have to keep an eye open for it, as you can get some most peculiar effects with access paths like fast full scan. Drop the index, and this time create it as a bitmap index. Right, so we did use the index, but not in a very efficient fashion. Let's try running the query now. Ah, single value. And look what's happened to the cost. The cost has come down from 36 to 4. And comparing costs like this is not always valid. But a change of that magnitude, we're going to have got hugely improved performance. Hugely improved performance. And it will not have been direct read. That will have been cached. That will have gone through buffer cache. So we can see here then, coming back to the bullet, that the performance of the bitmap index on a column with few distinct index values, the performance, just the cost, is far superior to a B tree. And finally, think of space usage. The space usage. I'll disable the auto trace because I'm about to look at a data dictionary view. And that would really cause problems with auto trace on. How John, big is my. Yes. Pardon me. This is a, a simple little. Um, uh, language thing, but in your third bullet, you say performs well in columns with few distinct values. Some people use low and high when talking about distinct values. And so um, could I replace few with low? Um, so seems fair too. It certainly does. And that might be better language. Yep. Thanks, John. It was just a simple little thing, but I've seen it so many times. Thank you. There's an acronym you'll see as well, NDV, number of distinct values. And the NDV of a table is a term you'll often see used as well. So let's see how big that thing actually is. So the index is CI. How many blocks is it? 16 blocks. And that's when it's a B tree, remember. I'll, re I'll drop it and recreate it as a bitmap. So that's when it's a bitmap. It's a bitmap index at the moment, isn't it? So we'll just drop that index, index CI, and recreate it as a B tree. See how big that is. Woohoo! 16 times as big. So that's four common problems with B trees. And I'm sure you will see these first three in all the databases you administer all the queries you run, not all of them, but many of the queries you run, and definitely in all the databases. Space efficiency, well, that's a different matter, but it's often very important. 